I want to rank all of the boyfriends in Sex and the City. Now, my criteria for this was that they actually had to be boyfriends, not just like one-off guys who appear in one episode. And even there's a couple guys that appear in like two, like um, John Slatterly uh, as the politician. I think he appears in a couple, but he doesn't have like a meaningful story arc really. So I went through like the big relationships for all, for all four girls. Um, I did stick to boyfriends, so I did not include Maria. Although she is kind of toxic, I will say, when she like throws the plates, like not great behavior. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go through my ranking and it was challenging, but here we go. So I, I counted 11 meaningful boyfriends and coming in at 11, bottom of the barrel, dead last is Richard Wright. What a freaking asshole this guy is. Okay, like he just, Everything, I hate the way he talks. I hate the way he smiles. I hate the way he treats Samantha. I mean, he cheats on her multiple, multiple times. He has someone else buying her her gifts. He breaks her heart again and again and again. And then when she's finally happy with Smith, he comes in and she cheats on him. And then Smith, like Richard Wright sucks. It's awful. There's like, I don't think anyone is gonna deny me on that. He's in last place. At number 10, Jack Berger. Let me tell you, it was very hard for me to not put Jack Berger in last place, especially in rewatching it. I'm like, ugh, this guy is awful. He's insecure. He's jealous. He breaks up with her on a post-it. Although I will say the post-it is my favorite line in the entire series, is the episode where Carrie gets broken up with and Charlotte gets engaged. And at the end of the brunch, at the beginning of the episode, Charlotte is like, everything happens for a reason. If I didn't get divorced, I wouldn't have met my divorce lawyer and I wouldn't have gotten engaged. And she puts her hand out on the table and then Carrie takes the post-it and she's like, paper covers rock. I think that is the most brilliant line in the series. I love that moment. But beyond that, Jack Berger just sucks. He's, he's awful and he's like, you know, he's cute. And they like, even at the beginning, the fact that they like basically go on a first date and then like at the end of the date, he's like, by the way, my girlfriend, um, then they have no chemistry in bed, which also sucks. Then he's just jealous and misogynistic and can't be kind to Carrie. He's kind of awful to her friends. He just, buy burger, no one's gonna miss you. And then coming in at nine right above him, but also just like a terrible, terrible boyfriend is Alexander Petrovsky. Look. I love Barishnikov, and it breaks my heart to have to put him so low at the list as an actor. But this relationship, the whole thing, like, first of all, Carrie being with an artist feels wrong. But then Carrie getting like icked out by him being romantic also feels wrong. He's like older and rude and condescending and cold. He brings her to Paris and then he totally abandons her. She when she doesn't go to her party, it just breaks my heart. I Honestly, he should be last because he slaps her, which is like unacceptable, like not okay at all. And I can't believe sometimes that they kept that in, that that is part of the story. Like that is kind of wild to me that that makes it in. I, I just, Richard Wright, I think is worse than Petrovsky and I just don't like Berger, but maybe Petrovsky should be worse than Berger. I don't know. There is There is not much redeemable about Petrovsky minus the episode where he gets her the Oscar de la Renta dress and then they dance in McDonald's. Like that's a very cute moment, but he's awful. And like when they have the dinner party and he's so, I feel the secondhand discomfort of that dinner party. Okay, those are the real bad guys. That's like my absolute, like these guys suck. Now we're into the sort of, the next three I think are like mid range. Like they kind of suck. They don't totally suck. Number eight is gonna be Robert. And that's the doctor for the Knicks that Miranda dates. He like lives in her building. And the reason he's number eight, he's actually a great boyfriend. I like him. He's sweet. He's sexy. He's like, tells her he loves her on a cookie. Like how fun is that? And then when they break up and granted, granted Miranda is not super kind to him in the breakup, but she ends up with her son's father, the true love of her life, like, he has no grace in that breakup and 
he's really icky in the breakup. So that's why he ends up there. But I do like his character. Um, number seven, strictly middle of the pack, is where I put Big. I, I don't like Big. I don't. I don't think he's, I don't think he's very good at anything, frankly. Um, he's a jerk. He's awful to Carrie. He then cheats on his wife with Carrie. He leaves her at the altar. I know I'm not talking about the film, but he leaves her at the altar. Like, Big is, is toxic. He is the worst boyfriend ever, and he does have this radar. She says it when she's about to go to Paris, and granted, we know she needs to be saved for Paris, but it's like every time she's happy, he just, like, swoops in and is like, you can't be happy now. And it's like, cool, got it. Um, I don't like Big. I don't like Carrie and Big. I think Carrie and Aiden. Not to give away what I'm going to, but Carrie and Aiden. That's the real couple, except I think Aiden maybe deserves better than her. Anyway, that's Big. Coming in at number six, Trey McDougal. Trey is complicated because I don't think Trey is a bad guy. He's just kind of like a paper cutout of a guy you know he just like he has some high moments where you're like wow this is nice I love that he ends up standing up for Charlotte at the end when he's like Charlotte was a wonderful wife give her the apartment I think he tries his best but he's just like under his mother's spell Bunny McDougal now that's a villain I put her at the bottom Trey is just like this sort of like useless dude that just like wanders about and Charlotte fell in love with him for the wrong reasons and in the end yes she has to go through a divorce which is very hard for her and he makes some bad choices with his mother and stuff but like in the end he's kind of harmless okay now we're into my top five this is where it got a little hard because I love all five of these men very dearly and yeah, this was hard for me. At number five is actually Aiden. I know. And I, I was surprised to see Aiden come in this low for me because I love Aiden. But I do think he has some, like, kind of not so good qualities. Like, he doesn't trust Carrie. He really tries to push her into the marriage. I Carrie is awful to Aiden. I think we can be clear. Like, she cheats on him repeatedly. Um, she says yes to marry him when she doesn't want to marry him. She is so mean to him when she goes to his cabin, like I already talked about. Like, I kind of get why he's kind of mm, to her. And then when he makes her buy the apartment and does that without like talking to her about it, that is like super not cool energy. But other than that, like I think he tries to be a really good boyfriend. He's very loving. He's very caring. He's a good guy. There's a sweetness to Aiden. I get why they couldn't work out together, but I blame her. At number four is Steve. I love Steve. I love Steve so much. And again, I don't consider the movies and everything that's going on now to be canon. Like Steve in the original series is just, he loves Miranda and he takes her for what she is. And that is something that I don't think the guys that I have already mentioned, even the ones who were good, like Trey and Aiden, for example, I think where those two go wrong is that like, they are trying to change the woman that they love to just like be okay, be okay without a baby, be okay with marrying me. And it's like, whoa, Steve follows Miranda's lead. He's like, I just love you and I wanna be with you and I'll take it at whatever speed you need. And we're in this together. He's a good dad, he's charming, he's cute. He ends up, you know, being driven, he's sweet. He just loves her. You know, he doesn't have this like baggage. Steve is amazing. Number three is also a Miranda guy. Believe it or not, I put Skipper in at number three. And I know some of you guys are gonna be like, oh my God, I forgot Skipper existed. Skipper is so sweet. Now look, would I date Skipper? Probably, he's just like so unbelievably awkward and uncomfortable, but he also means well, and he's a romantic at heart. And like, you can't put him any lower than that because there is not a bad quality to Skipper. He's just not the right guy for any of our women. Our women would like completely just like chew him up and spit him out, like eat him alive. You know, he, he just, he can't hang with these girls in a way that a Steve can while still being sweet, but I love Skipper. And then my number one and two, ooh, picking who got to be one and two between these two men was incredibly hard. But at number two, Harry Goldenblatt, 
I love Harry so much. He is just the best. He's funny, he's kind, he cares about Charlotte. She's also kind of bad to him when she yells at him. I think he's, he can, you know, he, he doesn't, I, I put him second because I got like really annoyed at him in that Seder too when he was watching the Mets game and then like he leaves her. I get why he leaves her, what she said was very mean, but I think he leaves her for a little too long. But other than that, he is just perfect. And the way that he deals with all of the like pregnancy stuff is really, I just love them. And I love them as a couple. They're so right for each other. He's exactly what Charlotte needed to like bring her down to earth a little bit and remind her what love is actually about. And I love their relationship. But at number one, the best boyfriend on Sex and the City, Smith Jared. Man, I love Smith. He is, he's perfect. He really is. And he loves Samantha so unconditionally. He never tries to change her. He understands who she is. He gives her space. He takes her back after she cheats on him without like, sometimes I'm like, you should have said something, but he just loves her. And he's there with her through cancer and he never lets fame goes to his head. He's also so gorgeous. Um, he's, he's just perfect. And I, I, you know, it was really hard to choose between Smith and Harry, but I think Smith just shows a bit more, he's a little bit more of a rock for Samantha because Samantha needed it more because of the way that her storyline went and, and the own, I've talked about this, but like her own, you know, battles that she needed to overcome. Um, but Smith and Harry, either one of them, just like the two best men ever. So in the end, I think at the end of the series, we have Smith, Harry, Steve as the guys that those women end up with. And I'm so happy with them. And Carrie ends up with Big, which is what she wanted all along. I don't want it for her. I wish in a more enlightened world, she could have realized she could have done so much better. Um, and even if Aiden wasn't the guy for her, she could have found someone who loved her in the same way that Aiden loved her. And I understand that Big loved her, but he came with too many, too many strings attached in my opinion. But regardless, I might not be a fan of Mr. Big, but I am such a big fan, see what I did there, of the show.